is you right now, Father God, for opportunity, Father God, to that are open and receptive to your word today. We thank you, Father God, right now for come on, giving us hear what have us to hear from your word. Father, we thank you right now for wisdom and revelation, knowledge and understanding being poured out today. Father God, we invite the Holy Spirit right now to come in and to have his way, to give us understanding, to give us revelation. And we give you the praise, the glory and the honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We're, we're back at 2 Kings. Y'all, I can't get I can't get it out. I heard God. God told me he was like milk it for everything it got. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna milk 2 Kings 4 4 right now. So um so we're just gonna get back into it. I saw something else in it when I when I was doing it. I you know I told y'all last week I thought I was done, but then um I was listening to it again i was reading it again and then something else popped out of it and i was like oh that's another word so i was like okay so we're just going to milk this word amen i don't i know y'all don't mind milking a word you know get everything you can out of it but you know and that's what god is having having me before we before i can go on to anything else so second kings of the fourth chapter Starting at the first verse, it says, Sir, a certain woman of the wives, other sons of the prophets, cried out to Elijah, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditors are coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and pour into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. And I want to take mine from this verse. And when you come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons then pour it into all the vessels. So if I was going to put a title on my message today, it would be, don't worry about the it. Don't worry about the it. Because he told her, pour it into all the vessels. So she could have stopped Elisha right there in his tracks when he, when he got to and pour it into all the vessels. She could, have, she could have told him, I only have a little bit of oil. How do, you, or how do you want me to pour this little bit of oil into all those vessels? She could have said, how am I going to do this? Where is the oil going to come from for me to pour it into all these vessels that you are having me to borrow? She could have said, I don't see how this is going to happen, Eli Elisha. Who, and then she could have been like, who's going to provide me with the oil I need to pour it into all these vessels that you are going to borrow? So it shows, So she could have stopped Eli, Elisha right there in her track, right there when he said pour it into all the vessels. But she didn't, and I thank God. But, but it's also a lesson for us because so many times as believers we put our faith in in the hows the ifs and the wheres and when i say that we're we're constantly sometimes asking god how is how are you going to do such and such a thing god how is it going to happen where is it going to come from who are you going to use and i wonder if god is going to use this person or this thing to bring what i'm asking to pass so sometimes we put our faith and our, you know, our confidence, you know, in the hows, the ifs, in the wheres of God. In Second King, we also saw earlier this year, we see that another man had the same problem about the its. And it says over 2 Kings 5 and 11, but Naaman became angry and stalked away saying, I thought he would surely come out to meet me because Naaman had, remember Naaman had what? Leprosy. And, and he wasn't being healed. And so his little servant 
girl said, I wish my master would, would go to Elijah, for Elijah would certainly heal him. And so he goes to Elijah thinking that, you know, Elijah is going to come out and just do something. And, and Naaman gets upset because he gets a message from his servant. Gehazi, I mean, Gehazi, I believe, comes out and tells him, Elisha says, go dip in the Jordan seven times and you'll be healed. Yeah. But it says, Elisha, I mean, but it says, Naaman became angry and stalked away saying, I thought he would certainly come out to meet me. And he said, I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of the Lord his God and heal me. Naaman had more trust in the methods, the hows. Remember we talked about the hows, the ifs, the where. He had more trust in the methods than the word of Elijah. He was more focused on the method of, it, of, of him receiving his healing. Now, you know, and then I was, as I was, you know, I went to Burger King this morning. And most of you know, I go to Burger King pretty much every morning and get a sweet tea. It's just my, my a little morning routine thing and you know and um and so God told me something about the Burger King method and he's and he says and he says to tell him that God is not a BK <laughs> you can't always have it your way <laughs> you can't always tell you can't be telling God hey I need you to use this person but not this person God I need you to do it this way, but not this way, God, because, you know, and sometimes you can't even tell God, God, you know, I want you to bless me financially, but Lord, don't let it come, come, come through cash up, because Lord, I don't have a cash up account, I don't have a cash up, or be so, 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 you know, Lord, I don't need you to do it that way, I need you to do it, I need you to, you know, put it in this bank account, you're going to do it, Lord, have it put in this bank, you know, we come up with all these methods, with all these BK ways, trying to tell God how to do his job. Come on. And so and so we can't treat God with that same kind of methodology of Lord, you gotta do it this way. So again, the title of my message is don't worry about the it. When you trust the word and not the method, God is able to work unexpectedly through you without you even knowing it to bring it to pass. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you don't trust God about the how he's going to do it, where it's going to come from, who he's going to use. When you don't trust God with the methods, he's able to what? work it through you almost unseemingly. Without, it's almost like, thank you. Thank you for this open road that I can just do it the way I want to and do it how I want to. He don't have, we don't have to send God through no obstacles and turnarounds, you know. In order to get it to us. Also, we must learn not to get angry or question the methods and ways of God, especially when you ask him, which is what Naaman did. He got angry and he questioned the method and the ways that God wanted to bring him. He questioned the it. Because he was like, surely he should have came out here and did and went, just waved his hand. You know, because that's the method Naaman wanted. He wanted he wanted a particular way of receiving from God. And so many times, you know, we want a particular way of receiving God, and that ain't the way. But the way that Naaman received from God calls Naaman to a turn around and to have and to actually have a repentant heart. It, calls him to give the praise to God and not the praise to himself. Because if it would have been his way, then he would have thought he did something to bring it to pass. He would have took the glory for it. Because he would have said, see, I knew, because see, I just went there and, you know, I just told him, you do it this way, then he would have took all the credit for it. But he couldn't take no credit for going to a river, a dirty Jordan River, and dipping seven times and coming out clean. How do you go in a dirty something and come out clean? Yep. Right. Only God. Right. Only God can take your dirtiness, go through the blood of Jesus, and you come out yeah. sparkling clean. Amen. As they say, take take a heart of sin that's black and it come out red. 
bread covered with the blood of Jesus. Only God. So, so then he wasn't concerned. So, so we also must, must learn that God sees farther than we see and he knows more than you know. He's wanting far greater. Remember, our thing for this year is exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. How many of y'all want that? Amen. I Amen. want the exceedingly and abundantly above all I, above all we can ask or think. And, and I'm just trying to help help us in this, in this year to have that. And to not be so focused on, okay, Lord, I, I, I want the exceedingly. I got you. I have my expectation. You know, Lord, I'm expecting some things from you. But now the unexpected of God is where you don't worry about the how, the where, the when, the it. <laughs> you don't worry about that. You say, God, you know, I just trust you with this desire. I trust you with this. And I'm just believing you to bring it however you want. Lord, if you want to heal me this way, I'm cool. If you want to just take it away, I'm good. If you want me to go, because remember this year we also talked about instruction. Y'all going to hear me talk about instruction all year long, guys. Instructions, hearing the instructions of God. Remember, Naaman had instructions. Go dip in the river. The woman with the issue of blood, I mean, the, I mean, the woman with the oil, with the debt problem had what? Instructions. So all these instructions were to get her to her debt. Those instructions were to get Naaman to his healing. So, so there is instructions we must do. There are some, there is things that God will speak to us. And if we're careful and we're obedient to follow those instructions, it will turn out even greater, far above we can ask or think. Amen? Amen. Another example of, of having faith in his word and leaving the method up to him. Is found in Ezekiel 37, 3 through 10. Ezekiel 37, 3 through 10 says, And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, Oh Lord, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Lord, you know. And again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise and a suddenly a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I look, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. He also said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus said the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them. And they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceedingly great army. So in other words, he trusted the word that God was speaking to him. And he left how God was going to do it unto God. God just told him, speak, say this, say this. He didn't go... How is this going to happen, Lord? How is it, how, how, how am I going to, you know, Lord, how is my speaking going to make this happen? How is what you're telling me going to put these bones back together? He didn't, he, he just trusted the word and left the method, the way, the how, what? Up to God. All we got to do is what? Be obedient to whatever God is speaking to us, whatever word. And Ezekiel just spoke to the bones and saw God put the bones together right before his eyes. If you want to see God put some things back together again in your own life, if you want to see God use your voice to call some things into existence, if you want to see the unexpected of God, have faith in the instructions he gives you. Amen. 
Amen. Put, have Amen. faith in the words he speaks to you and obey them. Amen. Amen. Have faith in his words. Just be like, okay, God, I don't, you know, you're with, you know, with, with your natural eye, you might not can see it. You might not can figure it out. But all God is asking you to do is have faith in what I'm telling you to say. Have faith in what my, my word says about, the situ about your situation. Focus on that and leave, and leave everything else up to me. I, I, you know, and most, and most, you know, my, 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 my husband works, works for the government. And, you know, there are times, you know, I have just heard, heard others, him and others talk about some of, some of the things that they undo. And so one of the things I realized is, is that in the government, they have contractors to help them with their job. You know, they sometimes contract work out, you know, and have other comp companies helping them to um, undo certain things. And one of the things I learned is that they don't micromanage the process. You know, they tell them what they desire, what they want, and they leave the method up to them. They tell them we need bank, we need boom, boom, boom this, and we need to buy this, 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 boom, and that's it. They don't. They don't tell the contractors how to how to do their job. They don't tell them who to use on their job. They don't tell them what to use. All they do is tell them, this is the desired end product I want, or we want. <laughs> so, so, so they leave the method of getting it done up to them. They're not calling, they're not, they're going, okay, who, who, are, who are you using to, to um, fill this and fill that? Who are you? You know, and, and I don't know him. You know, they're not sitting up there going, I don't, I don't know that person. How do you, you know, I don't know that person. This is what? Leaving the what? The method up to the company. We, you know, this is what we want. So however you can get us what we want is fine with us. Whoever you use is fine with us. And then the Lord told me, he says, many times we try to micromanage God in our prayer, prayer requests the same way. We tell God how to do it. We tell God who to use. And we tell God also when to do it by. <laughs> Anybody's, anybody want to be honest and be like, yep, been there, done that one. <laughs> Instead of what just believing him and trusting him and hearing and obeying his voice and leaving the methods and timings up to God. Somebody said, I'm not going to no longer micromanage God. <laughs> not going to be because because God knows how to, how to do his job. Amen. God knows how to do his job. And, and so we have to just let him. The Bible says it's according to our faith that we receive from him. So it's by us acting and believing on him that we receive. So all we do is what? Act on what we hear from God or act on what his word says. Receive his word and again what? Leave the what? Method up to him. That's where the unexpectedly comes from is leaving the how up to him. And as we see in that, in that story with the widow woman, Elijah just told her what? Shut your door. And pour it into the vessel. So, so she wasn't concerned where the it was going to come from. All she did was what? Believe God. Believe the word that Elijah told her. Because she was desperate. She was desperate for an answer. And how many, how many of you have ever been desperate about something? You know, you need an answer like speedy quick. And guess what? And you were so intent on, on hearing from God, you didn't care. You were like, God, whatever, whatever, whatever you say, I'm going to do it. Whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it because you were desperate. And she was desperate for God to what, deliver her out of debt. She was desperate not to have her sons go 
go into slavery to, to pay off the debt. So she was going, whatever the end is you want me to do, I'm fine with it. So, so when you, and sometimes when you're in desperation, you don't question the methods. You just believe God, trust God, and God does it. Amen? Amen. So she went and did it. She went inside her house, closed the door, took an empty vessel and a little, little bottle of oil, and it says she what? Filled them. I can just see her not even questioning. She, she, and she's just pouring it out. And she, you know, and the oil's being poured from her little jar, and it's just kept on. And as we said but before, it was coming from an what? From an from another source. Because she trusted God as her source, the door for another source, another God source, was open. So the it that she needed came from God. Because she didn't worry about the it, the how, the method. When she heard Elijah, she it was what an open road. Remember, all we want to do is leave God what an open pathway. No obstacles, no hindrances, no doubt, no fear, no unbelief. Just a clear open path so that God can do it. And God had this clear flowing path between her and that little jar of oil. So, so his glory, his anointing was flowing from her into the jar and, out, and pouring out. Come on, think about that for a moment. <laughs> think about how a clear, clear path God had from, from her faith and, and her faith in God. Her faith in God opened up a clear path between her and the bottle. That's pretty good. So much so that God could just con continually just pour it. <laughs> I love that. And this year we want that same path open for us. We want that same clear path. That path of God, I just believe you. I just yeah. trust your word. I just believe your word. And I'm just going to leave everything else up to you. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm going to, I'm going to take the word of God. When I do worry, I'm going to take, take the word that says, cast your cares on, on, on you for you care for me. So I'm going to, I'm going to put that ever before my mind. I'm going to remember, Lord, I cast it that, I cast that care on you. I cast the care of, of, of how it's going to happen. I cast the care of when it's going to happen. I cast the care of who you're going to use, Lord. I cast all that upon you, Lord, and I just believe your word. I just believe and trust that you're going to do it. I expect you to do it, Lord. My faith is fully expecting you to bring it to pass. So I leave everything else, Lord, at the table, you might say. <laughs> Because that's what we do when we come to God with our request. We tell him, hey, here's my request, Lord. Here's what I'm, here's, here's what I'm asking, Lord. And I lay it right here. And I walk away. Fully expecting God to take care of the request. And leaving the how, the method, and everything else up to him. Hmm. So what it, what it's are you worried about instead of trusting God with today? What's your it? God is wanting you, you, to, you to trust him with all your it's. Amen? Amen. And this is, this is going to be a short message today. So, so, so today, go to your prayer closet. Go, mm -hmm. go to that place where you spend time with God and just tell God, I'm giving you my it today. You know, your your uh, it could be your children, it could be your health, it could be your calling, it could be your church, it could be your job, whatever, wherever the it is, and you're saying, God, I need this done, I need this it done, I need this particular thing, Lord, I need an answer to this, and God is saying, when you come to me, trust me with it, trust me that once you make your request known unto God, remember that scripture? 
Make your request known to God. Once you make that request, once you say, Lord, you know, you know, you know, it could it, it could be a problem. You're like, Lord, I got this problem on my own job. And Lord, and and I really don't know how to go about doing it. I don't, you know, I, I need it fixed. I need it resolved. I, I need it. You take, you know, you can be just saying, telling God, just pour out your heart to God. Because cause God don't mind you pouring your heart out to him and telling him. And you can be like, Lord, this is what this is. And you can be like, and Lord, I just need it handled. I just need it solved. I need it resolved. I, I just need some, I just need your wisdom and everything you're telling God. And once you, and then once you be like, and Lord, I just ask you to solve it, to fix it, to do whatever, Lord. And Lord, I, and I'm going to leave how that's, how that can happen up to you. God, God could possibly give you instruction on how to do it. Or he could tell you to go talk to someone. See, all these different methods that God can use. And some of them, and then there might be some you ain't even thought of. But you're leaving the door open for God to what speak to you what to do. Or he might just tell you, don't worry about it. <laughs> and then you got to have peace in the, okay, Lord, I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> and Satan could be trying to tell you, well, you ought to be worried about it. You should worry about it because what happens come Monday morning? Da, da, da. God said, I heard a word from God. He said, don't worry. <laughs> it's going to sound crazy, but be happy. <laughs> just cast your cares over him. Make your request known. With thanks, what the scripture says, with thanksgiving and the peace of God that passes our understanding will guard your heart and your mind. So we want to, so we want to take that word and just be like, Lord, I'm going to have peace. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to make my request and then I'm going to trust you to give me whatever, and whatever instructions I need, God, I receive them. However you want me to do it, Lord, I'm going to do it. Whoever you want me to speak to, Lord, you ought to have you ought to have, have this open thing. Lord, whatever, and Lord, whatever you want me to do about it or not do about it, I receive that too. Amen. That's another thing. After you make your request, be like, Lord, and whatever you whatever you would have me to do, I'll do whatever you want me. And sometimes, <laughs> and I and I and I heard this when I was putting this message together. Sometimes it can be as simple as go forgive, forgive so and so. You might be thinking, what does so-and-so have to do with the problem on my job, Lord? What does forgiving sus, sus, the blue shoe, Lord, have to do with my job, with the problem on my job? Remember we talked about the open pathway? Remember, remember the pathway being clear and open? Sister Susie, Sister Blue Shoe could be the obstacle standing in the pathway of you getting what you need, of, of hearing what you need because... You know, you got ought against her. <laughs> Whatever you hear from God, do it. <laughs> Even if it sounds crazy. Instructions. So that God can do that unexpectedly through you. And, and so he can show himself mighty and strong. So he can show, your, show himself. So if he tells you to forgive, forgive. Amen. No matter what you think, remember, don't, don't get caught up in the methods. Don't have faith in the methods. <laughs> don't get angry and question what? The methods. That's right. Remember that? But that was, that was the point. Don't get angry and question. Don't, don't be like naming it and get angry and question the methods and almost miss out on God healing, on God moving. On God showing himself strong. Because you, because you're getting angry and you question the method. You question the instruction. Just do it. Have a just do it mentality. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. Do it, do it, do it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you for this word, Father God. We thank you today, Father God, for helping us. 
Father God, to not worry about the ends, to not worry about the methods, to just lay everything at your feet, Father, and to trust you with it all. So, so Father God, we do right now, we lay it at your feet. We lay every concern, we lay every worry, we lay every problem, we lay every situation. Father God, we lay every negative report. Father God, we lay it all at your feet. And Father God, we thank you right now, Father God, for, for resolving it, for fixing it, for healing it, for delivering it, for restoring it, for making it whole. Father God, whatever is needed, Father God, we thank you for doing it. And Father God, we forgive. So Father God, if we have ought against anybody, we choose today, Father God, because we want you to have a clear path. We choose to forgive. Father God, and we thank you right now, Father God, that whatever instructions we need to know, whatever we need to, um, um, whatever our part, Father God, in making sure your pathway is clear, Father God, speak it to us, reveal it to us, show us. Father God, download your wisdom, Father God, your knowledge, your understanding, your revelation. We receive it right now. Father, we just want you to be glorified. Just as Naaman gave you the glory, just as this widow woman gave you the glory after it, Father, we want to give you the glory. We want others to come to know you, Father God. We want, we want to be a testimony, Father God, to others, Father God, and to tell others the greatness of our God and what our God did for us. So, Father God, that is our prayer. Our prayer is not to show off. Our prayer is not, not so that we can look good, but, Father God, we want people people to know the goodness of you and how good you are so 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 father god right now father god if we have 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 put any kind of methods in our head father god regarding any situation regarding any kind of plan regarding any kind of request father we lay them down we right now take the methods that we have put on you we take them off the table father and we destroy them right now. And we say, Lord, you do it. You do it. So we give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. And as we prepare ourselves to take communion, amen. Hallelujah. Did y'all get something out of today's word? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. And we do thank God for the opportunity to, to just take communion again. Yes, yes, as as Pastor says, we've been we did we've been doing this since December 2019. When God had instructed us to take communion. And we had no idea that COVID was coming in 2020. <laughs> and we just started to just and God had just told us to just start declaring the blood, the blood, the blood, declaring the blood of Jesus over over ourselves, over our family, and everything, and just taking communion and just reminding him that, you know what, we're in blood covenant with our Father, amen? amen. And that and that we have blood covenant rights, amen? So we have a right to healing, we have a right to deliverance, we have a right to restoration, we have a, a right, we have a right, right to right to God moving in our lives because we're in covenant with him. And then just bringing ourselves in remembrance of that. So, so, Father God, we thank you right now, Father God, that as we bring ourselves in remembrance of all that you have done for us, as we bring ourselves in remembrance, Father God, that, that Jesus died on the cross and he was rose from the dead, and because of that blood, we have redemption and we have a better covenant based upon better promises. Father God, we take this communion, reminding ourselves, Father God, 
that, Father God, that our bodies are healed, our minds are healed, our families are healed and restored. Father God, we take this, Father God, communion, reminding ourselves, Father God, that we are covered with the blood. Everything connected to us is covered with the blood. We declare, Father God, that that one, your blood, Father God, Father God, Father God is around us, surrounds us, keeps us and protects us. From all hurt, harm, and danger, sickness, and disease as we trust in your word concerning it. So we thank you, Father God, for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. For, for Paul says over in First First Corinthians 11, chap, chapter starting at the 23rd verse. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this and remember to me. Let's all eat together. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. That's all. Thank you, God. Amen. And also, before we go, um, anybody online, because we're trying to make it a point. Anybody, if there's anybody online right now who does not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we invite you today to receive him, to receive the person who can change your life, the person who can who can bring you out of debt, the person who can bring healing to your family, healing to your problems, healing, who can just pour out his spirit upon every area of your life and make you whole. And if and if you want to become acquainted with with, with the Father, all you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on a cross and rose from the dead for me. And I receive you, Lord, as my Savior forever. Amen. And if you have done that, please let us let us know. Please let us know in the in the comments so that we can celebrate that with you as well. And we love you guys and we will see you all next week. Love you. Amen. Amen.